I just want to start this video by apologizing. I have not been recording. And I want to record this process pretty in depth as I finish putting it together. But unfortunately, I was running out of time really, really fast to finish this truck. And I had to grind. So it is currently Friday the 26th, whatever. I leave Wednesday for UCC. Thursday night, I didn't have a cage in it. I didn't have a valve body. I didn't have, I mean, the list was very, very long of things I had left to do. And it's that old saying, the last 5% takes longer than the first 95. That hit me about probably last weekend. I, with that being said, these last couple days, I'm gonna do a really good job of filming, catch up on everything because it all comes together really, really fast. Okay, we are continuing to pick away at the race truck. We have, well, I was gonna order brackets to mount my nitrous solenoids onto that stainless piece that I made. Nitrous Express brackets are $50 a piece. I need three of them. I was like, I'm not paying $150 for nitrous brackets. So I took the other piece of stainless that I had left over and made little brackets. One bolt mounts with a 10 mil or a six millimeter bolt, 10 mil head, and then the two bolts and a little cutout for the, uh, for where the nitrous comes out of the solenoid. Yeah, it's a little ghetto, but uh, honestly, I don't care. It, it's not worth the $150 to me. That looks just fine to me. So we're getting the last one mounted up. And then I think we're going to go out for dinner tonight with a couple friends. Have a guy's night. Um, girlfriend's staying home, so we're just going to go out, hang out, shoot some pool, the usual. So I probably won't film too much more today. Okay, so this is the finished product. Uh, I ran the wires through. I'm sure I'm going to have some rubbing issues on the wires. Looks pretty good. Um, I got to clean these hoses up. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these. I think I'm going to cut it off here and then run it, maybe run it up into the cowl and then down behind here. And then, you know, I'll tap this hose in right here and then run another splitter down to the lower coolant pipe and then split another one, you know, this T off to the front of the radiator just to kind of clean this up because this is just ugly like this whole thing here is just ugly okay it is friday may the 5th and honestly i was planning on sorry going through some construction anyway i was planning on going and working on the truck but tj uh, one bad vp44 is going to be racing at great lakes tonight just doing some tests and tune so i figured you know, take a little break. We've been grinding and head up to Great Lakes about 35 minutes and watch him race and help him in the pits and just honestly just have a chill night because I'm getting wore out from this. So it's it's been a it's been a grind the last couple weeks here. Those of you that aren't familiar with TJ's truck, it is a VP44 truck that goes low tent, bottom tents and he's trying to push into the nines and honestly tonight might be the night uh it's gonna be a chilly brisk night you know trucks me making power so hopefully hopefully you can have a good night right, we're on a great lakes dragway tj's got his truck out it's a nasty old vp truck here First pass, he just made the one-two shift. It felt like it was lazy, so trying it again. So he had a weld break on his catch can. So we're just gonna hose clamp it like so. Okay, so. 
Uh, four inch, I think. Okay, so TJ thinks he needs to retorque the head. Uh, it's pushing oil out the back of the valve cover. So we're gonna pull the valve train out and retorque the head. Uh, yeah, coolant pressure was getting a little high too. But uh, yeah, we're gonna pull it apart here at the track and torque them down and see what happens. Yeah, I'd say uh, that would probably do it. I mean, it's hot, so you're gonna get a little more, but yeah. That's a lot of, a lot of turning. It really is. Back up and going, all back together. We're gonna make a pass and see what happens. Also, we put the big tires back on. He was running out of gearing. Okay, so for those of you guys that don't know, a VP44 is limited about 3,500 RPMs, which is why he's having the gearing issues on the back track. Because the other guys, you know, P-Pump guys, CP3 guys, we can turn 5,000 RPMs off the back door, plus, and not have an issue. He loses all fuel past 3,500, so that's the difficulty of making a VP44 go fast. And you're limited to a really tight compound setup. Okay, update, it is Saturday, May the 6th. And one of the trucks, the LMLs, I was in here for some work, the exhaust tune, etc. That one got picked up today, got paid for that one. That's all good. And he dropped his brother's 2020 um, L5P off. That is gonna get the exact same treatment, except it is getting some other goodies as well, an intake, so should be good. On the race truck, we got the turbo about halfway in. Um, let me turn this off, it messes with the lighting. Anyway, it's about halfway in. We got the oil drain done, which is the hard part, honestly. Now it's just the up pipe gaskets. But the new turbo does sit about an inch and a half lower. So it's gonna be really interesting on if the hot side pipe works and the exhaust should work. The intake works, I already checked that. So the intake still works. So it's just kind of the hot side pipe that I'm a little concerned about, but not a big deal. I have not been recording much. I'm currently working on the enforcer engine for Dylan that is gonna be getting sold this week. Actually, it's getting sold tomorrow. So he actually had bought this engine with a, with, it needed a cam and uh, he got a new bill of cam. DNJ took care of him with that. And he had to replace tappets at the same time. He ran out of time, couldn't make it there. So now I'm putting the tappets in for him and putting the cam in. So for those of you that don't know, the tappets are that, you can see the little round thing right there. You can see just kind of the top side of it. That's the tappet that rides on the lobe of the cam. Now once those are in, you can work your cam all the way in. Yes, it's a pain in the ass. And then you gotta line your timing marks up. So if you see there's a zero on this gear, and then you have a zero on each side here. 
So you want to spin your crank over until you can line those two up. So I'll show you how that looks when I'm done. So you see the zero on the crank gear there, the two zeros, they're just marks, witness marks on the cam gear. So then if we just kind of wiggle this in right there, should slide right into place. And there, now the engine is timed. Harkins back over here. We are working on the race truck. Now it's been a few days. Uh, I've been knocking out some LFIP things for some buddies. And uh, finally got around, got a welder out here. We're gonna get knocking out on the cage. So we've been fitting everything. And so far I'm liking the way it's gonna look. Okay, I didn't get a chance to record much because we were knocking out the cage. I am super happy with it. Honestly, I'm stoked. Thank you, Harkin. Harkin came over and we spent the entire day putting this thing together. Now, we're not 100% done yet because we ran out of welding gas, but we got really close. So we got the main hoop in, all welded in, back bars are in, burned in. Um, the back bars, they look like they're steep and that's because they are. I wanted to keep them in the cab um, ignore my holes. They're really big. I'm making covers for them anyway. I planned on doing that from the beginning. I didn't want to go through up here. I probably could have, but I just didn't want to have to try to cut in here. So anyway, we went there with it. Bars are at 33 degrees. NHRA specs, they have to be at least 30. They are 33, so we are good. Also, I don't think I did anything on this, but we did get our drive shafts made. Fuck. Okay. Now that we got it somewhere where it's not going to move too much. They are 1485 U-joints, which is what came factory on my truck, so that's what we decided to go with. They are solid U-joints, non-greasable, and it is 5-inch aluminum, quarter-inch wall, one-piece aluminum drive shaft. That's a bad unit. That unit, they said, is good for whatever I throw at it. They said, try to break it. Do what you can. If you do, bring it back. We'll make you another one. Back to the cage, though. The front bars, um, they're just tacked in. They're a little steeper, I think, than what they want, but we kind of ran into the issue where we were going to get into the front cab mount here, so we wanted to have the bracket come somewhere in here before it so that we were able to weld all the way around it and get a good weld. So we went a little steeper on the bar so that way it came in before the mount. We did get the seat mounted. Um, that's just eighth inch mild steel to the cage. Yes, it's a mild steel cage. Welds, Harkin did a good job. Plenty of penetration, plenty of good welds. So happy with those. Now in the mail today, Garen sent us some goodies. Um, sent my valve body in about a month ago to get switched over to a full manual constant pressure valve body, which is the race application valve body from them. We Today we just got that back. We got everything here to put the valve body in. And honestly, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to have somebody walk me through it because I have not messed with the 48RE before. This is completely new territory to me. Like I said, I don't know everything. I'm just a roofer doing this in his garage, having a good time with it, building a rowdy truck. Okay, so this is going to be our ignition and our start. So this jumbled mess of wires, which is about as clean as I could make it. So anyway... So that's everything off. You turn this on, that's ignition on. So when ignition on is on, we take our test light here. Okay, so that's ignition off. So this yellow wire will run to the ECM. So when the ignition is off, you have nothing on the test light. Turn your ignition on, you got constant power to your ECM to tell you that, or to tell it that it is ignition on. And then this wire will run to the Relay that goes for the starter solenoid. So when ignition's on, you have nothing. Hit the push to start. Test light comes on. That's your starter kicking in. Pretty simple. Works good. I think I'm going to change this to my check engine light, actually, because I don't really see a point in both of those lighting up. If that's how the instructions have it, but I'm going to change that so that way that is my check engine light. Okay, so it has been about two weeks since I filmed the last clip. And like I did, said in the beginning of the video, I do apologize, but it's crunch time, it happens. So in the last week, we have done a lot. A lot of the little stuff, 
has come together. We finished the cage. The cage is 100% in and done. Ratchet, ratchet shifters mounted. Um, you know, I got my belts in, my belts are done. <clears throat> so we're good there, safety wise. We wired the valve body, um, you know, lock up overdrive. And then we pretty much have the front diff actuator wired up. Um, we welded on all my nitrous bungs welded on my coolant bypass and my we got my transmission cable in and adjusted and my shift linkage uh, that all worked out phenomenally Garen got the valve body back so obviously that's in since we wired that up now here's where I have been absolutely stressing and my close friends know I have been freaking out I mean freaking out DMAX swap has had my ECM since the first of the month going on four weeks tomorrow. I talked to them beforehand. They're like, yeah, we'll get it turned around. Not a problem. You'll have plenty of time to test, yada, yada. Well, I still don't have an ECM or a wiring harness. And I leave in three, four days. I leave in four days for UCC. Now, I'm not one to rag companies, but they did kind of go MIA and stop emailing me back. They don't have a phone number. I couldn't call them. I had no idea what was going on. All I knew is they told me it would be done like two weeks ago and it still wasn't done. They weren't messaging me back as of like three days ago. Three days ago, they did get in contact with me, told me it will ship out Thursday. Thursday was yesterday, still hadn't shipped out. Still in, by one o'clock in the afternoon today, I still had no shipping information, no word from them, nothing. Today, I finally did get confirmation of shipping. They overnighted it. They did cover the overnight shipping, which was nice of them. You know, they were gonna charge me for it, but they were late again. You know, it was supposed to ship yesterday. So I'm assuming they were just like, you know, whatever, we feel bad, shipped it out today without, you know, charging me. So that is much appreciated, but I would have rather have paid, I would have paid $500 more to have that thing two weeks ago if I knew that's what it would have taken. Now, obviously money can't buy time. It is what it is, shit happens. Tonight, I am going to get everything ready that I can so that way when my ECM comes tomorrow, I can put the ECM in, put the wiring harness in, you know, wire up my ignition and my starter, which I can't do until the ECM's here or the wiring harness is here. So that way when it's here, it is ready to go. All I gotta do is finish that start it up if it runs good put throw in the front end on and we're gonna take it and try to put a couple miles on it you know I'd like to put 20 30 miles on it at least before I take it to the track so I know there's not any driveline issues you know with the 48 swap custom drive shafts all that stuff you know you don't know what's alignment something could be off somewhere whatever I'd like to put some miles on before I go out and run you know X amount of miles an hour on a strip also obviously you want to make sure that it's not gonna leak stuff on the track and all that sort of stuff so the plan is I think Sunday we are going to be driving this truck if, as long as the CCM works so I will catch you guys back in my shop for the next clip and we'll dive into it okay we are back in the shop and here is the final product on the cage so all burned in there um, seat be belts are in belts are all mounted go there boom belts are good shifter is in shift linkage is adjusted a little harder to press now steering wheels all on hooked up come around on the back side nitrous bottles in i know they're not happy about this but i think it's gonna pass i hope it does so you can see on the frame this is where we went with the main hoop and then in the back you can see we went right back there and the same on that side now the front bars those come down and mount there worked out nicely now up front we got our bungs welded on for our coolant bypass which is here um, we got some nitrous lines on Bungs welded into the cold side pipe, which I'm not, you know, people recommended against this. We're going to see how it works. 
Now, the reason they recommend against it is because it doesn't get time to atomize before it gets to the engine. I've talked to a few people. Some people are like, yeah, that, that, that'll be fine there. Other people are like, eh, I don't know, I might move it but, to a pre intercooler. But that's where I have it. That's where we're going to do it. So now up front, it might look like we're really far away, but we're really not. Those of you that have been around the channel know that I have put it together from here in a matter of an hour and a half. Like this is nothing. The whole front clip is one piece. Bumper, grill, headlights, done. So the plan today is I want to play with the shift linkage a little more, try to tighten it up a little bit more. Um, not entirely happy with it. Ain't good work there, but I'd rather just make sure it's going to shift gears when I want it to shift gears. Um, I'm finishing up running wires from, from my push to start button through this harness down below. I got a little bit of looming left to do here, I know. But then it comes up right here, and this will go to my starter to activate my starter solenoid. For the rest of the day, honestly, I don't have much. I got some painting to do, and then I did find a manual transfer case from a good friend of mine, and I'm gonna see if it's the same. It's off of a 4L80. I don't think it's the same. I really don't, but I didn't really look into it, so I was like, I'll just, you know, take some measurements, see if they're the same. And then just have to paint up some of, you know, places that we were welding and clean up, just kind of make it look a little nicer because honestly, I have time. Surprisingly, I have free time. And I cannot get into how excited I am to drive this thing. I cannot wait for tomorrow. I cannot wait for that wiring harness to get here to start this truck for the first time with the 48 RE. Okay, so I've actually decided I'm ending the video here. I'm gonna upload this and then hopefully have one more before UCC before we leave on Wednesday. That's gonna be final assembly, ECM install, wiring harness install, test drives, and then probably a night at the track. I'll upload that on the way to UCC. So we, we can really push some content out. I think this video is gonna be long enough. Um, I think it's a good place to just kind of leave a cliffhanger on how you know things are gonna go in the next couple days and give a good update because it has been a month. I appreciate everyone that supported the channel and followed, um, you know, followed as we go through this. I enjoy doing it. You know, I'm not looking to make any money on this. Just give you guys something to watch and do something that I enjoy. So I really appreciate it.